Okay, so uh, uh, Skunk Tree Carvings posted a couple of uh, comments and asked some questions about the uh, G0632, which I put a DC treadmill motor on. Uh, so I was going to explain a little bit about it. And he also asked about the uh, uh, indexing jig that I made. So uh, it works with the uh, four jaw chuck from Grizzly, the uh, H6265. So I uh, thought I would just go real quick over that for his benefit and uh, hopefully I'll get some use out of it and along with anybody else who sees this. All right, so give me a second here. I'm gonna switch the camera around. Okay, so the jig itself is pretty simple. It's a piece of three quarter inch birch plywood and then I took a nail, it cut it to this shape so that it's back off the center of the, of the uh, lathe and then put a nail in here which I'd taken on uh, with a hammer on an anvil and squared the head because on the chuck the indexing holes are square so I figured what the heck it'll hold it tighter or whatnot and sure enough it does um, and then I, I didn't feel like routering a board for it so I just took a couple of slats and and screwed a couple of blocks on top of it and that allows for uh, a bolt with a block that fits the channel on the lathe to fit underneath of it like so. So let's see here, there we go, drop in there, like that, and then there's a washer and a spring because you want to be able to move it around uh, fairly easily since it slides back and forth to lock and unlock. So we tighten that down and you got just a little bit of play so it'll move around fairly easily. And then slide it over and you can see if I zoom in here I'm on the wrong side of the camera to be making these adjustments. You can see the nail there just locks into any of the 24 indexing points on the chuck and you can pull it back wheel it around to the next one that you want put it back in there locks it up so it comes in real handy for the spirals that I do because all the marking has to be indexed and all that before you actually start carving them um, and that's why I created it in the first place when I got into doing the spirals so that's that part of the uh, video let's go over and see if we can't figure out uh, uh, the uh, DC motor part. Okay, so forgive the shakiness of this part. I actually decided maybe it's easier to film with the, the uh, camera in my hand here. So when I first got this lathe that had the big old plastic switch right here, and I think it was about a year or so after having it, uh, I broke a switch. So I just put a toggle switch in, so that's been there for a while. This is the DC part. Uh, this is the potentiometer, and this little bracket right here keeps it from rolling around freely because uh, we had an issue when you had uh, something on it that was just slightly out of balance it would actually vibrate enough to just turn the potentiometer and keep going faster and faster and faster and faster and that's sometimes not a good thing. Uh, I've still got the uh, variable speed indicator on it. Uh, it's all wired in. Over here is the motor control off of the treadmill and of course the treadmill motor with the flywheel. We did learn the hard way that you want to keep the flywheel uh, when you do these because these cooling fins have a lot to do with this motors operation uh, This is the transformer for the uh, uh, AC conversion. So uh, Let's see here. I, I You can run these with just the motor control uh, the actual switches and, and buttons and whatnot from the uh, treadmill But I found out it's a lot easier to wire in a 10k potentiometer like here um, it just wires into these three and then I've bundled the wires and just back them up but uh, these go are uh, HW and L which go to the high low and wiper on the potentiometer uh, by the way my time in the Marine Corps was spent in electronics so I have a little bit of an idea what I was doing when I did this if you don't have somebody or if you don't know that much of it you better get somebody who does when you try to wire these up so all the other wirings down inside of here uh, where it's in danger of being cut at all times, but we keep it tucked away pretty good. Um, anyway, I wired into the original cord uh, to the the power going to the converter, and then uh, the converter, of course, runs the DC motor. Now, I could put the, the thing about this setup is that every time you switch it off, 
it shuts off power to the converter. And when it shuts off power to the converter, you have to reset the uh, potentiometer to zero before it'll turn again. Meaning if you just turn it off and you're at 1,000 RPMs, when you turn it back on, it won't do anything until you turn it back to zero and then bring it back up to 1,000. So if you're doing something where you need to repeat at the same RPM a lot, it's kind of a pain. Uh, most often we're turning, or my dad likes to use this one to turn bowls and platters and whatnot, so it's okay because he's got to start off slow every time anyway. Uh, as far as the mount for the motor, this one has uh, this odd mount. It's common on DC motors. But what we did is we took a quarter inch thick two by two uh, angle iron and drilled three holes in here to match the original motor mount and then bolted it on and then bolted this part of the mount from the uh, original treadmill on here and put this pin in here and it's got a tightening bolt over here which lets me lean it back to uh, tighten the belt and then I can tighten that bolt and it stays tight. I'm not showing you that well enough. Anyway, so pivots on this, tightens here. As far as the belt goes, these come with a flat belt and I uh, can't get that any further away, can I? Anyway, the uh, so what we did is I put it, uh, clamped it into a bench grinder or into a bench vise and took a side grinder and actually ground a V in the uh, pulley for the belt. I don't know if you can see that in there. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. So it rides into that V that I grew, gr uh, ground into the flywheel. You can't go too far, you grind through it, but far enough, it, it seems to do the trick. The belt shows a little bit of wear at first, but then it settled in because I didn't get my slot quite wide enough. It settled in and it does just fine. If I went to a, uh, a 3 8 belt instead of a half inch, it would probably just ride it and just be fine. Uh, I left the uh, original Reeves drive uh, piece up here, so if I want to, I can actually adjust loosen this and, and adjust this out, set it at a higher speed and then lock it down and it runs anywhere in that range that it wants to. As far as torque goes, uh, at low end, actually I've got this thing unplugged because I knew I was going to be in that electricity, electric stuff there. There we go. At low end, not a whole lot of power. Um, let's back back out here. So you flip it on and it'll light up all zeros. You turn this all the way back. This is all the way down. As you start to turn it up, it kicks on. It is kind of noisy. But there you can see we're at uh, 240. I can slow it down. It sounds like hell when it's doing it, but it will turn. There we go. That's about as slow as you can keep it. That's 30 RPM, somewhere between 20 and 30. Uh, which works great for finishing, but to be quite honest, for turning, not a whole lot of go there. Once you get it up to about 280, 300, right in here, uh, it'll pretty much do anything you want to do. Uh, you get a real big piece on there. It, it's kind of got some lag because of the, then there's more leverage out that far, but for the most part, uh, once you're in balance, you're never going to go less than about 450, and this is 450, and it, I haven't been able to slow it down hardly in that. One of the nice things about these converters is as they feel uh, more resistance on the motor, they put more power to the motor, so it overcomes it. So it, it does this kind of a weird thing when you first, uh, like if you're roughing something out, when you first let the chisel off of it, it'll speed up about 30 to 50 RPM, and then it'll slow back down to settle back down to what speed you're running. But even that's minor. Uh, you do the same thing with the AC motor, except maybe not quite as, uh, uh, not quite as bad. Uh, now what I was saying about turning it off, when you turn it off here, uh, if you don't reset this dial, then when you turn it back on, even though the dial's in a go position, it ain't going. You have to turn it all the way back and then bring it back up. So, but it works like a champ. I have no problems uh, with it the way it is. Uh, I just needed something a little bigger, hence the 0733 that's sitting over there uh, that I just got. My new baby. Anyway, so while I was at it, I thought I'd also show you 
this lathe over here, we've got three of these things. <clears throat> this is a 1941 uh, power craft that Mark Grimmery Ward used to have and sell. Uh, it's a 14 by 36. It doesn't have a gap. I was thinking it had a gap, but I guess that was the old Craftsman 12 inch. Anyway, so when I took the Grizzly's motor off, I had a really nice two horsepower motor sitting around. And so I ended up putting it on here. And I kept the Reeves drive, and I kept the stuck pulley that was on this. The first problem we ran into with this lathe was that the arbor was an inch and an eighth, seven TPI. And there's just nothing that fits that. So we put, we took it to a, a, well, a couple of different machinists before it was all said and done, and got it milled down to a one inch, eight TPI. Still got the Morse two taper in it. We left that step pulley on there, mainly because this is an indexing pin that'll fit the indexing on the pulley, so we can index this lathe as well, which that was a big deal in 1941. Hell, that's a big deal these days. All right, so down here is the fun part. I had to build all this bracketing and stuff. Uh, I was a welder for a while, so that was not that big of a deal, but uh, heck, I built a whole stand this thing sits on. Uh, so I built this bracket, it pivots here, and then this arm that you see bolted on goes across over to a screw. You jump around the other side here. It goes over to this screw, which rides on a pivot, and then this nut here, of course, is on the screw, and it's, it's, a, it's a fast thread screw. But the awesome thing about it is that this gives us, on this particular lathe, and I'm plugging it in now, uh, and it's a little noisy, so I'm going to tell you this before I turn it on. As you turn this and vary the width on the Reeves drive, it changes the speed on whichever pulley you're on. And there's enough distance between the motor and the arbor that I can run it on three of the four steps. So at the low end, uh, which is the big pulley up here, I'm getting somewhere around 400. There's no RPM uh, indicator on this one, so we're just doing it by math somewhere around 400 to 1725, which is the speed of the motor. Uh, this is actually the same size as the big pulley up here, so it, it, uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio at its highest speed. But then, if you switch it to the next pulley up there and you get a little bit smaller on this end and then run it through this, I'm guessing it's gonna come up around 2800. And on the smallest of the three that I can reach with this belt uh, and this at full speed, I think we're running about 3200. It's really fast, but it's kind of neat. Works like a charm. Right now we're actually a little above low speed. Let me take it all the way down. There we go. That's as low as it goes. I should have had a faceplate or something on here. But, and then as I bring it back up, you can hear it change pitch. It's flat sailing. So there it is. Not a bad little dude. Yeah, the bottom one, of course, like most reason drives, the two halves move in and out. But, and there we go. So anyway, I hope that uh, answers all your questions, Skunk Carver, or Skunk Tree Carver. That was what it was. Anyway, <laughs> have a, uh, a wonderful evening, and I'm going to get back to it, all right? Bye.